This is ABC Radio Brisbane and Queensland with Kat Feeney. G'day, five minutes past one. If you were standing in your kitchen with the kettle just boiled, mugs on the bench, little bickies are all laid out, ready to go. But then you hear something, something a little strange and unexpected. You're standing in your kitchen, ready to make a cup of tea, and you hear footsteps coming at you. Strange sounding footsteps. And your heart quickens and the hairs on the back of your neck start to prick up and you start to sweat a little bit and you start to breathe rapidly. And you're just wondering, you know, who's this, who's, what is coming at me in my kitchen? And maybe you become convinced that you're actually facing a pretty dangerous intruder. What do you do? What do you do if you're in your kitchen ready to make a cup of tea and you're convinced that there's someone coming to get you? You, 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 maybe you panic, maybe you run, maybe you reach for something to arm yourself with. But what if all of that was in your mind? What if it was actually just your mind coming at you, your mind playing tricks on you? If there was nothing there, nothing to worry about, and you were in the kitchen and with appropriate care, you could continue on with your cup of tea and your afternoon. This might be what it's like if you live with a complicated mental illness. And maybe you do need that proper care and the proper environment to receive that care. But, but what exactly does that mean? What does proper care and a proper environment for that care mean and what does it look like? Well, in a moment, you are going to learn about new houses being built to suit the needs of someone living with a chronic complex mental health condition. What is it about these houses that makes them suited to care? What makes them different to your house? And are these places being built in your neighbourhood? Stay with me to find out. On ABC Radio, Brisbane and Queensland. It is 10 minutes past one. Now, if you're living life in a wheelchair, you're probably going to need access to things that will help you live life to its fullest capacity. So you'll want ramps at home, rails, lower benches maybe. These are just some of the things that might make your home work for you. But what if you're living with a condition that affects your mind? What do you need in your home? to help you out. David Whitelaw and Chloe Day can tell you a little bit more because they're at the front line of creating specialist disability accommodation homes in Queensland, including for Queenslanders living with chronic mental health conditions. And they're joining you here on ABC Brisbane and Gold Coast to tell you a little bit more about a new project that has launched in Bridgman Downs. David, Chloe, g'day, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Um, they're called robust homes, these homes. What does that mean? I, I guess I can, I can start from that. Um, r- robust, uh, I think the, the brief that we had very early on, Kat, was that it needs to be uh, resilient but inconspicuous is the, the guidelines that were set to us by the NDIA. Um, uh, quite a fair few years ago in the uh, 2016 SDA rules. Um, and it, it means that uh, a building is it, it is resilient. Um, things like uh, laminated windows, um, uh, high-impact walls, uh, assistive technology uh, that can support participants living independently, uh, whether they live with uh, shared supports or, or living in a dwelling by themselves. So ro- robust is for, as you, as you mentioned, psychosocial mental health um, uh, participants with behavioural issues. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, David, that's sort of the building aspect and you're with Adapt Housing, so yes. that's your part of the we're equation. The, we're the bricks and mortar. Yeah. And, Chloe, you're more of the people side of the equation. You're with Open Minds. So tell me about the types of people who would need or take advantage of or be well suited to accommodation like this. So Open Minds in this project in particular are providing the service provision. So we'll be on site 24-7 at this house. But Open Minds works with a large variety of people under the NDIS who require 
um, support in either in their home or in the community. Some of our supports re people require 24-7 and mm -hmm. other times it's really a couple of hours a week. So it depends on the individual needs. But I would say in this project and people who require this housing and normally people that have been in long-term hospital admissions without any other option of accommodation to move back into the community, which is why we've been really excited to work with ADAPT around building this property to allow this opportunity for some of our participants who have had that long-term hospital admission with no other options to move back into the community and have a better quality of life. Because at the end of the day, that's what the NDIS is about and that's what we're trying to do. Mm. Um, David, would I be able to detect that this is a house that has been robustly made if I was a passerby or a neighbour or someone in the community? No, we, uh, we've had uh, many uh, families, advocacy groups go through and um, and we talked about that inconspicuous incons nature of the building. And, and really the only thing that really makes it a commercial building when you're standing inside is, is a green exit sign. Mm -hmm. um, uh, however, you know, it just does look like a very normal house. Uh, and once you sort of understand what's involved uh, behind the walls, um, yeah, it's very hard to tell that it's a, it's a very specialist build. Chloe, then why do buildings like this need to be inconspicuous? What's the point of that? Because we don't want people moving out of a hospital into another hospital. The point of moving back to the community is to have a place that they can call home. Home is full of plants. Home is with their chosen sheets and their chosen linen. I've been sitting in meetings talking about TVs that people want to purchase because they haven't had an opportunity to buy their own furniture in such a long time, choose what they want to have for dinner. So it's about making these properties feel like home and fitting into the community so it looks no different to the house next door. Hmm. You're on ABC Brisbane and Gold Coast. It's a quarter past one. My name is Kat Feeney and joining you this afternoon, David uh, Whitelaw from Adapt Housing and Chloe Day from Open Minds. And we're talking about a new home that has been built in Bridgman Downs in southeast Queensland. It is a robust home. It's suited to people who are living with complicated chronic mental health conditions. Uh, you couldn't recognise it as, as different from the other housing stock necessarily just by looking at it from the outside, but on the inside, it would probably be very different from your home. Um, and I'm, it just strikes me that this is a very different model of housing for people who have complicated mental health needs to the kinds of accommodations that we might associate with mental health based on the movies that we used to watch in the 60s, 70s, 80s, you know, padded cells, straight jackets, that kind of thing. Do those facilities still exist? Have we moved away from that? Is that why we need housing like this? Because there isn't that level of care or those kinds of facilities? When did all of this start to change? I would say that the NDIS has given us the opportunity to build more suitable housing. Um, before that, the only option really was Department of Housing and other rental properties, which wouldn't necessarily meet the needs of the individual, also the service provider providing the supports in those properties. So these properties are able for us built to keep our participants safe, but also the service providers in those properties safe at the same time in the community. Mm -hmm. How so? What's what, How does that work? These houses are on built on a bigger scale. So they've all got their own individual bathrooms. There's more exits to the property. There's, um, I guess, other components of the house are, as David spoke about, that reinforced windows, um, special tap where different aspects to the kitchen, including safety switches to the ovens and hot plates. If you think about someone who's been in a long-term hospital admission, they've lost a lot of their capacity building and their skill sets to be able to do things like cooking their meals and doing their washing. Mm -hmm. So we do need to put some extra things in place to help them while we build that capacity. David, is it tough to find appropriate sites for housing like this? Absolutely. Yeah. And, uh, and you know, we talked about the special features in the house, but there are more than just uh, internal features. It's making sure the location is right. Um, you know, pro uh, locations like backing onto reserves, battle axe blocks um, are, are really, really good sites. Why when, is that? Um, when, when we're talking about uh, individual participants, um, everyone requires something very, very bespoke. Um, and, um, and so I guess the nature of reducing that residential fatigue uh, when it comes to robust housing is really important. That's why we've got to be very selective. There is uh, elements and some of the other special features are 
soundproofing. Mm -hmm. That's not just from within the house outside, it's also from outside coming in to support participants sort of living independently. Um, yeah, they're probably some of the real key features, but site location is really, really important. Mm. There's no doubt about that. Close to amenities as well. We've got to think about transport, mm -hmm. uh, but certainly certainly having the right location uh, is very important for a robust build. And so this, this new place at Bridgman Downs is kind of benchmark gold standard, like to show what is possible and we mm. might talk a little bit uh, before we run out of time about options available to people who are keen to modify or access funding to to maybe address their own housing situation or so on but but just David how many of these projects are you involved in I mean how how many of these houses do we have in southeast Queensland yeah so we we've uh uh, re represent uh, like a national brand, I, I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, and we've got robust developments in Cairns down mm -hmm. to Victoria, um, across to um, Alice Springs as well, uh, and certainly uh, throughout New South Wales as well. We've got, uh, I think, about 29, I think it is, current dwellings in uh, future planning at the moment. Uh, however, the Brisbane North uh, opportunity is our first to really showcase what we're capable of, of supporting the NDIS with um, and being very bespoke when when we talk about the collaboration between an SDA provider and a SIL provider, i.e. adapt and, and open minds. Uh, are there enough houses, Chloe Day? No, there's definitely not. Um, when we look at the current people that we are already supporting, there is a huge need for this housing and unfortunately there's not enough people building it and not quick enough either. Um, this project's taken, I guess, from starting conversations to now quite a few years, mm -hmm. um, which is why it's really exciting to finally see it all come together. But it is a large project with numerous people involved, which means we do need more people able to build this type of accommodation to this standard. Mm. Dave? Yeah, when, when we think about the Brisbane North Project and Brisbane Downs, um, I think I, I counted there are 19 different organisations involved to, to really get it off the ground and making sure it is the quality build that it is, um, and, and being a very bespoke solution as well, and whether it be councils and certifiers, architects, SDA providers, SIL providers, support coordinators. There's just so many people involved in making sure that we get it right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and what are some of the other barriers to these uh, homes being built? I mean, you've outlined <laughs> the extensive hurdle jumping yeah. that has to happen. I'm thinking cost. I'm thinking community support or lack thereof. Are these factors that contribute to maybe the, the shortfall that we've seen in the housing Stock, suitable housing stock? The barrier that we're seeing at the moment is uh, is, is based around the building industry. Um, it's it's very hard to, to get uh, timber and, and steel and, and, uh, and plastics even. I, I spoke to a developer yesterday. It's really, really complex and... Um, and as we go through the process, we're, we're, we're helping everyone understand the space. Um, uh, you know, Chloe's been involved in the space for about the same time as us. We're well over, well, we've been involved as an SDA provider for three and a half years. And, um, and it is complex and we, we understand this space well. But it's educating everyone around us to, mm. to truly understand what a robust dwelling is. Mm -hmm. um, but at the moment, it's probably the building industry that's causing the most uh, uh, lack of demand, I guess. You're on ABC Brisbane and Gold Coast. Coming up to 25. Five minutes past one. You're hearing there from David Whitelaw, who is with Adapt Housing. Chloe Day's here as well from Open Minds. And my name is Kat Finney. We're talking about uh, housing specifically designed to help people who have been in facilities because of complicated mental health needs move away from the facility into community care houses in neighbourhoods around southeast Queensland. We're talking specifically about a new house that has been constructed in Bridgman Downs on the north side of Brizzy. Chloe, have uh, attitudes towards these kinds of projects evolved in the time you've been working in mental health care? Definitely. I think that people see the benefit of these properties and that this is the option and the best option to provide a quality of life for our participants that we do support. No one wants to live in a hospital for their whole life and this is the option to allow them to build their capacity, move back into community and have that better quality of life and more and more people are wanting to become a part of this. Mm. And in terms of picking a location and then consulting with neighbours or people around or providing links to services and so on, how does that happen? How is that achieved? We don't do, a, um, I guess we don't reach out to the neighbours in particular around that, but we do a lot of work with um, all the, I guess, services in the area in regards to the mental health teams, emergency services, so that everyone understands what's happening and we put some very um, 
process driven places, um, things in place mm-hmm. to put that get that together. And then I guess in terms of the education, and, and, and David, you identified a need to, to focus on education about, well, this is a housing category, or this is a solution for people who are looking for accommodation that do have complicated needs, or people who are in community and maybe have ideas about what it means to be living near or next to a, a house such as this. How do we then achieve that result of better education, of, of more informed opinion? It's about sharing those success stories, I guess, um, from participants who are mo- moving out of the facilities that that we probably perceive as as the, a mental health facility, for example, and uh, and sharing stories and uh, and getting a true understanding of of the participants' needs, mm-hmm. um, and and I guess using the environment to help create independence and a safe and secure environment. Mm-hmm. Um, the, the education is about um, you know support coordinators and participants knowing that this is available and going down the journey of getting the special funding in in their NDIS plan um, to to live uh, more independently. And, and to live in an environment that's safe and secure and, and sharing supports with a cell provider as well. Mm. So let's talk about that process, Chloe. If uh, you know someone is uh, listening right now and they know or they care for someone perhaps who has complicated mental health needs or they themselves need a bit of help, what, what is the pathway to accommodation at a facility like this where they receive support from, from open minds or other service providers? How do you get there? It is a long journey. So people do need to have access to their NDIS funding and do a lot of work with their support coordinators around getting their SDA assessments done and submitted to get that approval for the accommodation. And just pause there for anyone who's not au fait with the lingo, SDA assessment means what? So that's your um, specialty disability accommodation assessment. So normally an occupational therapist would be needing to complete an assessment for you Mm -hmm. based on what your needs are and the recommendations that then get submitted to the NDIA to have that approved. Mm, Dave? Yeah, once once uh, that, that SDA assessment and participants have SDA in their plan, then we can look at uh, location, look at service provision, uh, look at assistive technology, um, look at the build type design category and, and put a bespoke solution together, making sure the location's right, um, especially uh, getting uh, families involved as well, uh, whether it be family or OPG or advocacy groups, it's important to involve everyone. Um, the more work you put in early on, the more successful it's going to be. Okay, so the best place, the most relevant place for people to go if they're keen to find out more information would be where? Uh, I guess the local area coordinators, mm-hmm. support coordinators, mm-hmm. um, our NDIS. Uh, as I said, uh, there are lots of uh, wonderful stories about supporting participants with uh, SDA in their plan. Um, and we've got uh, quite a fair few, not just robust, but accessible accommodation. South East Queensland, or as I said, between Cairns and Victoria at the moment, and, uh, and looking to continue to provide the service. Uh, but as Chloe mentioned, it is a long process mm-hmm. and you've got to start somewhere. Uh, Chloe, any final messages to anyone? patients, carers, people in the community about what we're here to talk about today, about community care. If you are needing that extra support and you are looking for those accommodation options, do reach out because that option is available now and there are people out there able to help organise that and get those things moving for you. Well, both of you, thank you very much for joining us in studio this afternoon on ABC Radio Brisbane and Gold Coast. Uh, From ADAPT Housing, David Whitelaw, Chloe Day with you from Open Minds. And, uh, yeah, supported independent living is really what we're talking about here. Um, Thank you for your time. Thank you so much. It is coming up to half past one. You are on ABC Radio Brisbane and Gold Coast.